Welcome everybody. We begin today Be'ezer Hashem Yisbarech B'Shem Hashem Kel Oilam, a new class in the Rambam's monumental primary work of Halacha Mishneh Torah Yad HaChazaka of Rabbeinu Moshe Ben Maimon. Before we actually begin, and we'll begin with the Rambam's introduction to his Mishneh Torah, which is an incredible and vital introduction to understand the world of Torah and the world of Halacha. Let me just give a few um, remarks of the biography of the Rambam. Some historical details which I think are very worth knowing before we start learning Mishnah Torah of the Rambam. The Rambam was born on Erev Pesach, the day before Pesach, in the year 1135. Some say it was a few years later, 1138, but approximately the year 1135. He was born in Cordoba in the city of Cordoba, Spain. His father's name was Maimon, that's why he's called Rabbeinu Moshe ben Maimon, or Maimonides in English. Rambam is Rabbeinu Moshe ben Maimon. His father, Rabbeinu Maimon, Reb Maimon, was a judge. He was a dayan in Cordoba. And the Rambam grew up in that Spanish city. At around the age of Bar Mitzvah, there was a fanatical Islamic um, tribe sect called Almohads. Almohads actually is a combination of two words, Almohad, Elokim Echad. And this was a group of uh, Islamists who were determined to either convert the Jews to Islam or death. And they conquered Cordova and the family of the Rambam was forced to escape. Thus began years of terrible agony, turmoil and suffering in the life of the Rambam at a very young and tender age. The family escaped to southern Spain and then to Morocco. They lived in Fez, in the city of Fez, in Morocco, in North Africa. Then they left, they had to leave there. They left to Alexandria, to Egypt. They went to the Holy Land, to Eretz Yisrael. And ultimately, the Rambam settled in Fustat, which is Old Cairo. In Egypt, Old Cairo was called then Fustat, and that's where he lived till the end of his life, the Rambam lived for 69 years. When the Rambam was around 23 years old, he was born 1135, so when he was around 23 years old, he began writing a commentary on the Mishnayis. It was written in Arabic, so that every the Jews of the time should be able to understand. This was a monumental work, it took him a decade and we have today the Pirush HaMashnai Yisla Rambam, which is an incredible commentary on all of the Shisha Sidri Mishnah, a beautiful commentary in the Rambam style on every single Mishnah. He completed it at approximately, the, he started at the age of 23, and it took him around 10 years. Later on in his life, the Rambam wrote some of his greater works. So if he was born 1135, the Mishnah, the Sefer, the commentary on Mishnah, is, he began, as I said, when he was around 23, so that would have been around uh, between 1155 and 1160, because he was born 1135. Some years later, tragedy befell the Rambam. In a span of two years, he lost his father, he lost his wife, and he lost both of his sons. His mother died when he was a very young child, so he didn't grow up with a mother. The Rambam had a brother, Ibn David, who was a diamond merchant, he would travel to India, and he supported the Rambam, so that the Rambam can dedicate his time exclusively to learn, to teach, to write, and of course to study. Around the year 1170, 1171, Reb David drowned in a shipwreck, one of his journeys to India or back, and it devastated the Rambam. After all the other devastations, a few years earlier, losing his whole family, Now the death of his brother, who left a wife and orphans, fell on the Rambam. And that's when the Rambam went into the medical profession. And soon he was nominated by the Sultan of Egypt and Syria, Saladin, the famous Saladin, who appointed the Rambam as the chief physician of his court, which of course gave him a nice salary. He supported himself and he supported his brother, Reb David's family. Later the Rambam remarried. He had another child, the famous Rabbeinu Avram Ben Harambam who is the remainder, ch- remaining child who survived the Rambam and wrote works of his own and was a great student and disciple of his great father, the Rambam. In approximately the year 11, 
70, the Rambam began writing two works. One is Sefer HaMitzvahs, a brief work, an encyclopedia of the 630 mitzvahs. But then he also began writing his monumental halachic work, which we'll begin learning, called Mishnah Torah of the Rambam. This took him around 10 years. It's the only work that the Rambam wrote in Loshan Kaidish. All of his other works, like the commentary on Mishnayas, Sefer HaMitzvahs, and his other works were written in Arabic. The one work that he wrote in Loshan Kaidish in Hebrew is the Mishnah Torah Yad HaChazak HaRambam, which we're going to address in a moment what that Sefer is. It took him around 10 years. Later, the Rambam would write, when he was older, his famous philosophical magnum opus called Meirin of Uchim, the Guide to the Perplexed, which basically dealt with all many philosophical questions on Jewish, on Judaism and on Jewish theology. Uh, the Rambam there gives a comprehensive approach to Yiddishkeit from the Rambam's philosophical perspective. This is known as the Meirin of Uchim. The Mishnah Torah, the Sefer, the Rambam began writing approximately at the age of 35, because he was born 1135, 40, around 1170, around. At the age of 35, it took him 10 years, he finished it around 45. The Meir Nebuchadnezzar was written later. The Rambam also wrote many works in medicine. He was a great healer. I think the Rambam wrote approximately, it's assumed he wrote around 18 works on medicine. 18, including anatomy, uh, pharmacology, dermatology, uh, holistic medicine many works, which was incredible for a man of the 12th century. So you're dealing here with a person who wasn't only a genius par excellence, but also a person who encompassed all the streams of thought and brought them together, synthesized them in a comprehensive way. Also an extraordinary uh, Jewish leader in his day, besides being a great philosopher and one of the greatest halachic authorities in the Jewish history, to the point that this sefer is called probably the most seminal, or one of the most seminal, if not the most seminal work of halacha that was ever written in the history of the Jewish people, which is why the Rambam Sefer still remains a timeless classic, even close to a millennium later. The Rambam passed away in Egypt, on Chav Tevis, the 20th of Tevis, December 1204, at the age of 69, almost 70, and he was buried in the holy city of Tveria, in the Holy Land, that's where his coffin was taken, where the Rambam's grave is in Tveria, and engraved on the tombstone is, Mi Moshe, Vad Moshe, like Kam Moshe. From Moshe till Moshe, there arose nobody like Moshe. Of course, referring to the fact that from the first Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, to Moshe, the Rambam, Rabbeinu Moshe ben Maimon, like Kamka Moshe, there was nobody like Moshe. Of course, also alluding to the fact that he named the Sefer Mishnah Torah, which means the second to Torah, which he's going to discuss in the introduction. So the Rambam passed away in the year 1204, Chav is December, and as I said, he's buried in Tveria. A few words about the Sefer Mishnah Torah, which the Rambam began at the age of 35, around 1170, and completed approximately in the year 1180. The uniqueness of this Sefer, among many others, but I'm going to bring out one point, is the structure and organization. Till the days of the Rambam, there was no work that created a system of halacha. If you learn Gemara, so basically you can have a Masech to Shabbos, the laws of Hanukkah. A Masech to Menachos, the laws of Tfilin. It's not system, it's not organized in a systematic way. In one Masech, you can have many, many other halachas. Plus, it's filled with, filled with debates and arguments and disputations and questions and answers. So you have Chumash, you have Tanakh, you have Mishnah, you have Talmud Bavli, you have Talmud Yerushalmi. You have all the Midrashim, like Sifra, Sifri, Mechilta. You have also the, the Psakim of the Ga'inim that comes after the Gemara. And from all of that together, now you have to figure out halacha. But there's no system, there was no path, no, nothing was categorized and systemized and organized. The Rambam single-handedly took all of the literature of halacha, which means anything that is relevant to Jewish practice of all the 630 mitzvahs of Torah, and he said, I'm, we're going to make a system. Where do you even begin? Where do you even begin? And the Rambam began and completed the work. And he divided all of Jewish law, Jewish life, halacha, 
into 14 books, 14 svarim. Mada, Ava, Zmanim, Noshim, Kedusha, Hafla, Zroyim, Avoida, Karbonis, Tyre, Nezik, and Kenyan, Mishpatim, Shoiftim, which you will learn and become aware of. All of Allah, all of Jewish law, everything is in these 14 books, Svarim. Mada is the book of knowledge. Book of knowledge. Ava, the book of love. Zmanim, times. Noshim, women. Kedusha, sanctity. Hafla is segregation. Zroyim, or hafla, hafla is promises, vows. Zroyim, agriculture. Avoida, service, carbonus sacrifices, tara, purity. Nizik, and damages, king, and acquisition. Mishpatim, justice, civil law. Shoiftim, judges. If in each book, within each sefer, he created halachas. So, for example, in Zmanim, times, you'll have the laws of Shabbos. You'll have the laws of Yom Tif. You'll have the laws of Shoifer, Sukkah, Lulav, Megillah, Chanukah. That belongs to times. In Ava, the book of love, you'll have the laws of reading Shema. The laws of Tefillah, the laws of Davenik. The laws of Tefillin, the laws of Mezuzah. For the Ramam, it's all an expression of Ahava. In the book of Mada, the first one, you're going to have the laws of the fundamentals of Torah. Hilchis Dei is the laws of ethics, the laws of tshuva, the laws of Talmud Torah, laws of Avodah Zorah, of idolatry. That's the Sefer Ahmad. The law, book of Noshim, you can have all the laws of Ishus, all the laws connected to marriage, the laws connected to divorce, Gerishim, the laws connected to Yibum, a leveret marriage of Chas V'Shalom, somebody dies without children, the halacha of his wife marrying her brother, the widow marrying the brother, if the husband died without children, or Chalitza. That would go into the category of Nashim. Something unique here is that the Ramam included all the halachas of Judaism that is our eternal. In Shulchan Aruch, you only have the halachas that are relevant today. For the Ramam, that distinction didn't exist. Every halacha that is, that is connected to Judaism, even though it's not existent anymore because there's no Beis HaMikdash. The same seriousness, all the laws of purity and impurity, all the laws of the Beis HaMikdash, building the Beis HaMikdash, all the laws of the sacrifices, the Karbonis. The Ramam included all of Allah, including the Allah that are relevant to Mashiach's times. That he also includes at the end of his book, at the end of Shoftim, he has Hilchis Malachim Amalcham Yisayim, Hilchis Malachim Mashiach, part of the laws of kings. So the Ramam included, therefore, all the 630 mitzvahs, that which was relevant to his day and that which was not practically relevant to his day. And that's why it became such a seminal work, because it encompassed the whole halachas of Torah. Somebody who learns through Rambam knows every single mitzvah of the Torah and all of its details as articulated in the Rambam in the systemized, organized way of the Rambam. So now, so he has 14 books. In every single book, he has sections called halachas. Halachas Shabbos, halachas Erevin, halachas Yom Tif, Hilchis Megillah V'chanaka, Hilchis. He has 83 of such sections. In the 14 books, you have 83 halachas with 83 different themes that are dealt with. Hilchis Ishus is the laws of marriage. Hilchis Malva V'loiva is the laws of a borrower, of a, of a lender and a borrower. That belongs to where? That would be in the laws of Mishpatim. So... You have 83 themes, 83 halachas in these 14 books, and each, each halacha is divided into chapters. You can have three chapters. You can have uh, many, many chapters. And each chapter is divided into paragraphs, which we call halachas. That's the unique system that the Rambam created, written meticulously in a very clear language. And as you begin learning it, you begin to appreciate more and more you start learning Rambam, you delve into Rambam, and you see the structure of the organization, how he deals with it, and you really get to master in a certain way Kol Kula, because he includes Kol Kula, not all the pilpul and the questions and the answers and all that, that's Gemara. But in terms of the conclusions of the Rambam and everything that relates to every single mitzvah, of the 613 mitzvahs of the Torah, and the Halach. Okay, I think this is enough for today's introduction. And let's actually begin inside. Now, a lot of people learn Rambam, but they skip the introduction of the Rambam, and that's a big mistake, because this introduction is so important, it's so priceless for every, every student of Torah to know. Every yeshiva, every school has to learn this introduction of the Rambam. Introduction to this, and especially in addition to that, is the Rambam's introduction to Mishnayis, 
That's a very long and elaborate introduction, which is also critical to understand the Jewish the development of Judaism and halacha throughout the ages. Here, the Rambam does it in a more brief and concise and summarized way, different than his introduction to Mishnah. It's two very different introductions. That's much, much longer. This is much shorter. But this is a critical introduction, not only to understand the Rambam and his work, but also to give you a perspective about how halacha developed, which I find is so lacking today by a lot of people. They don't realize the meticulousness, the integrity, the authenticity, the precision of it, and so forth. Lamer Unhaven, let's begin. So please open up, Hagdama of the Rambam. He always begins with a, with a Pasuk, B'Shem Hashem Kel Oilam, in the name of Hashem, the God of Eternity. It's not in all the prints of the Rambam, but in the old manuscripts, the Rambam starts with that Pasuk, B'Shem Hashem Kel Oilam, and then he opens up with this fascinating Pasuk in Tehillim Kof Yutes, Ozlei Oivrish Ba'abiti Al Kol Mitzvesach. Then I will not be ashamed when I gaze at all of your mitzvahs. So his introduction to his introduction to the book that covers all the mitzvahs is that verse in Tehillim, I will not be ashamed when I can look at all your mitzvahs. Ba'abiti al kol mitzvah Says the Rambam, kol ha mitzvahs shenitnu lo lo moishe nitnu. All the mitzvahs that were given to Moshe Rabbeinu on Har Sinai were given with their commentary, with their detailed explanations. Hashem didn't just list 613 mitzvahs to Moshe. He also, every mitzvah came with a pirush, an elaboration. What it means, how do you do it? Because if you read the text itself, it says about tefillin, about sukkah. You should sit in a sukkah for seven days. What does that sukkah look like? Does it have a roof? Is it a kaziba? Can it be in a glass uh, a glass roof? What does it, sit seven days in a sukkah? Or it says... For seven days, you should look after Muhammad. On the first day of Sukkot, you should take a beautiful fruit. So what's a beautiful fruit? Is it, should I bring a cherry? Is it a watermelon? What's a, what's a beautiful fruit? An apple is a nice fruit. An orange is a nice fruit. Priyetzad. Or it says you should tie something on your hand or you should put it between your eyes. What does that mean? So the Rambam says, all the mitzvahs that were given to Moshe by Sinai were given with commentary, with elucidation, with explanation. Shenemar, the Pasuk says, in Parshish Mishpatim, the Etn Lchas Luchos Ha'Evan Ba'Tayru Ba'Mitzvah. Shem says to Moshe, "I will give you the Luchos Ha'Evan, the tablets of stone, and the Torah and the Mitzvah." Zok the Rambam, Torah is a Torah Shabiksa, but Mitzvah is a Pirusha. I will give you the Torah and the Mitzvah. Torah is a Torah Shabiksa. The text of the Chumash, the five books of Chamisha Chumash Torah. The Mitzvah. What's the Mitzvah? I will give you the Torah and the Mitzvah. The Torah has the Mitzvahs in it. I will give you the Mitzvahs. Zutar, that's the commentary of Torah, the explanation of what, which allows you to do the mitzvahs, because if you don't understand what it is, you can't do it. And he commanded us to follow the Torah based on the mitzvah, meaning, I'm giving you the Torah and the mitzvah, I'm giving you the chumash, the chumash, the chumash, the chumash, the chumash, and the mitzvah, so you should follow the Torah based on the mitzvah, you should follow the mitzvahs based on the interpretation of what they mean. And this mitzvah is what we call Torah, we call Torah Shabbat Peh, which literally means the oral tradition. The reason it's oral is Baal Peh. Baal Peh means it comes from the mouth. It's not written because Moshe didn't write it down. He taught it, as he will explain. The entire Torah, from Bereshis till the end of Sefer Dvarim, Leine Kal Yisrael says, the Rambam, Moshe Rabbeinu wrote it before he passed away. He wrote it with his hand. And he gave one Sefer Torah to each of the Shvatim, to each of the tribes of Israel. The Sefer Echad Nisano Ba'arin La'ed. And a 13th one, one Sefer he placed in the Ark, in the Mishkan, the Aaron, as a witness, as a testimony. Shenemar, the Pasuk says, Dvarim Lamed Aleph, at the end of Chumash, Lakoyach a Sefer Atoyra Azeb, a Samtam Moisib Hoyashon Bechal La'ed. Take this Sefer Torah, place it in the Aaron, and let it serve there as an aid, as a testimony to what the Torah is and what the Jewish people are and what the role of the Jewish people in the world is. This was a Sefer Torah that remained there. It remained there. And it remained there for generations until the Aaron was concealed. Much later, hundreds and hundreds of years later, 150 years before the destruction of the first Beis Hamikdash. So it's almost a thousand years after Moshe Rabbeinu, 
you still had the Sefer Torah in the Aaron, and you have to understand what that means. There was a manuscript that was written by Moshe Rabbeinu himself, and it remained hundreds of years. So this was like an aid, a testimony, that Jewish history wasn't just invented in a vacuum. There's an unbroken chain that begins with Moshe, and this is the aid, the witness that the Sefer Torah represents, and it remains in the Aaron with the Jews. They take it to Yisrael. It's in the Mishkan later, in the, and it's, it's, it goes into the first base of Mikdash. Va mitzvah shi'pido the mitzvah, which is the commentary on Torah, the explanation of Torah that Moshe did not write. So how is anybody going to know that? He communicated it to the elders, to Yehoshua, his student, and to all of the Jewish people. Moshe Rabbeinu says, everything that I command you to do, you should do. You should preserve, you should protect. What is it that I'm commanding you? It's basically, the Rambam says, that's all the oral communication, the explanation of Torah. That's why it's called Torah Shabalpa, the Torah that was communicated orally because Moshe did not transcribe it. Even though it was not written, Moshe Rabbeinu taught all of it in his court, in his base, in the 70 elders. The, the Sanhedrin, the Supreme Court of the Jewish people, numbered 71 from the days of Moshe. Moshe was the leader, but he had 70 skenim with him, as is custom Parchus Baloischa. So the Rambam says he taught it to all of them. The Elazar of Pinchas via Yeshua Shloshtum Kiblu in Moshe. Elazar, who was the son of Aaron, Moshe's nephew. Pinchas, who was Moshe's great nephew, who was the son of Elazar. And Yeshua, who was Moshe's faithful student. All of them, those three, received. The whole Torah Shabal Peh from Moshe Rabbeinu. They were the great disciples, even though he taught it to everybody. But these three received from Moshe, Ulu Yeshua, Shu Talmidr Shal Moshe Rabbeinu, Masar Torah Shabal Peh V'tzivah Ola. Yeshua, who was the unique disciple of Moshe Rabbeinu, his successor, his disciple, to him Moshe Rabbeinu gave over Torah Shabal Peh and he commanded him, he instructed him to take authority, to be in charge, to hold on to that tradition and transmit it. Yeshua, his whole life, he continued to teach the Torah orally. Everything that he learned from Moshe. Many elders learned from Yeshua. They received from Yeshua. Eli, who would become a Kohen Gadol in the Mishkan and Shiloh, he received the tradition of Torah from the elders who heard it from Yeshua and also from Pinchas, who was one of the disciples of Moshe himself. Ushmuel kibel me Eli obeys dina. Shmuel Anavi, who grew up by the Mishkan by Eli, Chana's son, say for Shmuel. Shmuel is receiving the Torah Shabbat Peh from Eli and Eli's Bezdin, Eli's court, because the institution of Bezdin of Sanhedrin continues in every generation. So Shmuel, who's later Shmuel Anavi, he receives it from Eli, who received it from Pinchas, who received it from Moshe, and also received it from the elders who received it from Yeshua, who received it from Moshe. The David. Kibel Mishmuel obeys Dina. David, who later would become David the king, he receives Torah Shabbat Peh from Shmuel and Shmuel's court, Shmuel's Bezdin. See, the Rambam says it's not only from Shmuel, it's Shmuel's Bezdin. As the Rambam writes in one of his letters that he wrote this, because he wanted to bring out there was no one person. There was always a rabbi. There were many students. There was a whole Bezdin, 71 people, and David received it from Shmuel and Shmuel's Bezdin. Achia Hashiloini. Man named Achia Shiloni, Meyotzi Mitzrayim, Hoyov Alevi, Hoyov Shama Mimosha, Vayakotin Mimosha, who kibble me David the Beis Dina. Achia Shiloni is a unique phenomenon in Jewish history. He left Egypt. He was a Levi. He still heard from Moshe Rabbeinu because he was one of the Jews who left Egypt. And he was blessed with a unique supernatural longevity to the point that he was a child in times of Moshe. But he survived all the way down to David, and he received from David and his court, Achia Shilaini. The Ravid here, Rabbi Avram ben David, will have an opportunity to discuss the Ravid's commentary on the Rambam and his arguments. He doesn't, uh, he doesn't accept that he accepted from David and Beis Dine, He was part of David's best, and not Kibble, because Achia Shilaini is older than David. Achia Shilaini is from the days, uh, from the days of Moshe. Ve'liyahu Kibble me Achia Shilaini Beis Dine. We're now going to go through the generation. Eliyahu, of course, Eliyahu Anavi received the Torah Shabbat from Achia Shiloini and his court. Because Achia Shiloini received from David and his court. 
Elisha kibam Elio will base dinner. Elisha received Tarisha up from Elio and Hisko. Viyayada Hakoyan kibam Elisha base dinner. The next generation you have Yahayada the Koyan receives from Elisha and Hisko. Uschari kibam Miyayada base dinner. Uschari gets it from Yahayada and Hisbeth. Vayishaya kibam Mischari base dinner. The famous Hoshaya was later a prophet, right? Hoshaya Hanavi, one of the books of the Tanakh is Isaiah. Hoshaya, he received from Mischari. Vayamos kibam Hoshaya base dinner. Vayishaya, Yishaya kibam Mayamos base dinner. Umicha. Micha kibel mi Yishayu beis dina. Vi Yoyel Yoyel kibel mi Micha beis dina. Vi Nachum kibel mi Yoyel beis dina. These are all known as the Trey Aser. These are the prophets. You have them in the Tanakh. You have Hosheya and Yoyel and Amos and Micha and Chavaka. Vi Chavaka kibel mi Nachum beis dina. Utzvayni kibel mi Chavaka beis dina. Yirmiya Yirmiya was very known as Yirmiya. No, vi kibel mi Utzvayni beis dina. He received from Utzvayni his court. U Baruch ben Eriya. Baruch ben Eriya was a student of Yirmiya. Kibel me Yirmiya beis dinai. He received from Yirmiya and his bezdin. And here I'm going to add in parentheses: these two people witnessed the destruction of the first base Hamikdash. So we just went through hundreds of years from Moshe Rabbeinu till the destruction of the first base Hamikdash. Moshe Rabbeinu took the Jewish people out of Mitzrayim and didn't take them into Eretz Yisrael. But forty years later, Yehoshua, who we learned about, took them into Eretz Yisrael. It took around four hundred and forty years. Building of the first base Hamikdash, which stood for 410 years. So that means around 800, a little more than 800 years, more than around 850 years after entering into Eretz Yisrael, the first base Hamikdash is destroyed in the presence of Yirmiya and Baruch Ben Eriya. And after Yirmiya died, Baruch Ben Eriya went to Babylonia, present day Iraq, where he taught the Jews who were exiled by Nebuchadnezzar. So we just went through hundreds of years from Yeshua, from Hashem Yeshua, all the way down to. Yirmiya and Baruch ben Neiria, who received the Torah of Alpeh from Yirmiya and his court. The Ezra based Dinai, Ezra and his best, and Kiblumi Baruch ben Neiria based Dinai. Ezra is, of course, the one who is involved in rebuilding the community in Eretz Yisrael with the second base Hamikdash after the Babylonian exile. Ezra and his court received in Babylonia yet from Baruch ben Neiria and his court. Based Dinai shall Ezra and Menachem Anshik Nesasagdoil. You see, you get here a scan, a bird's eye view of Jewish history's development. That's why it's so important. The court of Ezra, those who are called Anshik Nesasagdoyla, literally means the men of the great gathering, of the great assembly. This is the Bezdin of Ezra. These are Ezra's Torah colleagues, the, the spiritual leaders and ears of Torah Shabal Pev, that generation. Vehein, who are they? The Rambam gives us names. Chagai. Zechariah, Malachi, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishal, Azariah, Nechemiah ben Chachlaya, O Mordechai Bilshan. Number nine is Mordechai. We all know Mordechai from the story of Purim. Uzru Bavel, that's the tenth. The Ramam just named ten people on the Bezdin of Ezra who were part of the Antioch Nesach. It was all, not only ten. It was many sages. Ad Tashlum Mei of Estrim Skena. It actually made up the number of 120 elder Elders and sages who made up the Anshik Nesses Agdaila. That's why the number is 120 Anshik Nesses Agdaila. And this was all the Bezdin of Ezra HaSoifer who received from Baruch Ben Eiria, who received from Yirmiya and all the way back, who received from Tzvanya, etc. The last one, the last one to survive, who Shimon HaTzadik. You remember in the beginning of Pirkei Avis? Shimon HaTzadik Hoya. Mishyare Knesset Sagdoyla, that's what the Rambam says. So in the beginning of Pirkei Avos, you have Moshe Kibbal Torah Misinai, right? Mesara Lo Yeshua, Yeshua Lo Skenim, Skenim Nevi'im, Nevi'im Lanshe Knesset Sagdoyla. So over there, it's one line. Here you have the detailed transmission of Torah all the way down to the Anshe Knesset Sagdoyla. And the last one is Shimon Atzadik, Vuhu Hoya Miklal Meyer Be'estrin. He was in the group of the 120. The Kibbal Torah Shabal Pem Mikula. He received Torah Shabal Pem from all of them, all the 119 sages, Shimon HaTzadik learned from them, He was the high priest in the second base Amikdash, following Ezra, who was also a Kayan. So after Ezra came Shimon HaTzadik, and we know the Gemara tells us in Yuma that Shimon HaTzadik was a Kayan Gadol for 40 years. That's a long time. Next, Antignois Ish Soichoi Ubeis Dinoi Kiblu Mishimon HaTzadik Ubeis Dinoi. Antignois, the man of Soichoi and his Beis Din, received from Shimon HaTzadik and his Beis Din. 
So now we graduated from Anshik Nessus Hagdola and we go into the next generation, Antignus. Next, the Yosef ben Yezir, Shtay the Beis of Yechon and Yishur Shalayim, the Beis Dinam, Kiblu Mantignus of Beis Dinam. Yosef, the son of Yezir, who comes from a place called Sreda, and Yosef, the son of Yechon, who comes from Yerushalayim, they receive with their Bezdin, they and their Bezdin receive from Antignus and their Bezdin. And here begins a new era in Jewish history, I'm just going to mention this in parentheses, called the Zugois, the Peers. These are the great leaders and Talmud during the second Beis Hamikdash. Remember, Ezra comes and rebuilds the second Beis Hamikdash, and now we we are in the second Beis Hamikdash, and we have the Zugais. We have Jewish world is led by peers of two people. One is the Nasi, one is the Av Beisdin. The first is Yosef ben Yezer and Yosef ben Yochanan. Next, Yeshua ben Prachia ben Nitai Har Beili Ki Beisdin Ki Bulim Yosef Yosef ben Beisdin. Yeshua, the son of Prachia and Nitai Har Beili, and their court received from Yosi. Yosi ben Yezer is Shreda, and Yosef ben Yochanan from Yerushalayim and their court. Yehuda ben Taba Yeshua ben Shatach Beis Dinam Kiblu Yeshua ben Itayu Beis Dinam. Shema Yehuda ben Avtalian Geri Hatzedeku Beis Dinam Kiblu Yehuda ben Shimon Beis Dinam. Shema Yehuda ben Avtalian are both converts. They were not Jews; they were Gentiles who converted, and they received together with their court from Yehuda ben Taba and Shimon ben Shatach and their court. It's interesting that the Rambam introduces the fact that they were Geri Hatzedek. They were converts. Some of the commentators struggle. Why does the Rambam have to put this in? Why does the Rambam have to put in Geri at Sadiq of Kamina? I don't know the reason for it. Perhaps, maybe on one level, the Rambam is also teaching us something. That the tradition of Torah Shabbat Peh, the Messiah that goes from Moshe Rabbeinu till today, till the Rambam until today, goes through Shmaya and Aftalian, who were not born Jews, were Gaidim. Here you see the Jewish approach to people who are not necessarily born Jews, but this respect, the sensitivity, because it's about truth, it's about integrity, it's about authenticity. It's not about nepotism and, you know, elitism, etc. So the Rambam introduces that an indispensable part of our tradition, our Geri HaTzedek. Next, Hillel V'Shamai, Ubeis Dinam Kibbul Mishmai Avtalim, and we're now getting close to the end of Bayashani, Hillel and Shamai, live around a hundred years before the destruction of the second base of Mikdash, they receive from Shmaya and Aftalian and their court. That's Hillel and Shammai from Shmaya and Aftalian, the two Geirim. Reb Yochen ben Zakai, Reb Shimon ben Oishel, the Lola Zakai, and Kiblu Mehillel of Bezdina. Reb Yochen ben Zakai and Reb Shimon, who is the son of Hillel, the elder Hillel, receive from Hillel and his court. And here we have to mention something. Reb Yochen ben Zakai is the one who observes the destruction of the second Beis HaMikdash. I told you before that Yirmi and Baruch ben Eri observed the first Beis HaMikdash being destroyed. Rabbi Yechina ben Zakkai observes the second Beis HaMikdash destruction. So we now went through the era of the Messira through Bayez Shani. Rabbi Yechina ben Zakkai was one of the students of Hillel Azokin, as the Gemara says in Masech HaSukah, Tav Chavches, together with Rab Shimon, who was a son of Hillel, and they received from Hillel and his court. And we say Bezdin, it means it wasn't only Hillel. Hillel had a whole Bezdin. 71 people. Chamisha Talmidim Hoyolo Rebbe Yechina ben Zaka Vem Delech Hacham Shekiblu Mimenu. Rebbe Yechina ben Zaka, who was Hillel's student, had five disciples, and they are the great sages who received from Rebbe Yechina ben Zaka. The Elohim. Here we go. Mentioned in Pirkei Yavis. Rebbe Eliezer Hagadol. The great Rebbe Eliezer. Rebbe Eliezer ben Hurkin. Rebbe Eliezer Hagadol. Next, Rebbe Yeshua. Third, Rebbe Yossi HaKoyen. Fourth, Rebbe Shimon ben Asamel. Five, Rebbe Lazar ben Arach. These are the great sages who received Torah Shavah Peh from Rebbe Yochanan ben Zakkai, who received it from Hillel and his court, who received it from Shmaya and Aftalian and their court. And back. Next, Rebbe Akiva ben Yosef. Rebbe Akiva, the son of Yosef, Kibel me Rebbe Eliezer HaGadol. He was the disciple who received Torah Shavah Peh from his Rebbe, Rabbi Eliezer the Great. Of course, we are now in the era post Churban Bayesheni, because these are the students of Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakir, Rabbi Lezer Hagadol, who gives the Torah Shabbat Pet to Rabbi Akiva, who of course was murdered by the Romans during the Bar Kaichva revolt around 65 years after the destruction of the Second Beis Hamikdash. Rabbi Akiva ben Yosef received Torah Shabbat Pet from Rabbi Lezer Hagadol, the Yosef Aviv Geir Tzedekaya. Says the Rambam. Yosef, Akiva's father, was also a Ger. He was a Ger Tzedek. He was a just convert from the non-Jewish world who became a Jew. So Rabbi Akiva was a Ben Ger. Which is incredible. Now you have Rabbi Shmuel, Reb Meir, Ben Ger Tzedek, 
Whenever the Rambam can, he puts in if the person was a Ger or the son of a Ger. So you have Shmuel, you have Reb Meir, who was the son of a Ger Tzedek, just like Reb Akiva was the son of a Ger, Meir was the son of a Ger. They all received Teresh Wapa from Reb Akiva, Reb Shmuel and Reb Meir. The Gam Kibul Reb Meir was Chaver of Reb Shmuel. Reb Meir and his colleagues also received Teresh Wapa from Reb Shmuel. So Reb Meir received directly from Reb Akiva, but he also received it from. His colleague, Rabbi Shmuel, who was also a student of Rabbi Akiva. Chaved of Shor Meir. Who are the colleagues of Rabbi Meir who received the Torah from Rabbi Yishmael? Who received it from Rabbi Akiva? So here we go. Rabbi Yehuda. You have Rabbi Yehuda. You have Rabbi Yossi. You have Rabbi Shimon. You have Rabbi Nechemia. And you have Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua. You have Rabbi Yochid and Hasandler. Shimon ben Azai. Rabbi Hanina. Rabbi Hananya ben Tradion. Reb Hananya ben Tradin. These are all the colleagues of Reb Meir, who, as the Rambam said, received Teresh of Alpeh from Rabbi Shmuel, who received it from Rabbi Akiva, who received it from Rabbi Lazar Agadol, who received it from Rabbi Yechon ben Zakkai, who received it from Hillel, and Hillel Veshamai received it from Shmaya and Avtalion. So these are the colleagues of Reb Meir. So when you sometimes see in Mishnah all these names, you see the name of Reb Lezer, you see the name of Rabbi Akiva, you see the name of Rabbi Shmuel, you see the name of Reb Meir, who were students of Rabbi Akiva, you see the friends of Reb Meir, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Shimon, Rabbi Nechemi, Rabbi Lezer ben Shemur, Rabbi Yechonasan, Rabbi Shimon ben Azai, ben Azai, and Rabbi Hanani ben Tradian. Interesting to note, Rabbi Hanani ben Tradian was a father-in-law of Reb Meir. The Raman calls him a colleague of Reb Meir, but he was also a father-in-law of Reb Meir because Bruria was Reb Meir's wife, and Reb Hanani ben Tradin was Bruria's father. There's a whole Gemara about that in Avoid Zora, Daf, Yud, Ches. Reb Hanani ben Tradin was also murdered by the Romans. He was burnt alive, as the Gemara tells the story in Avoid Zora. Also, Reb Akiva had colleagues. They also received territory from Reb Lezer HaGadol. Who are the Chaveir of Reb Akiva? Hey, Reb Tarfin. Rabbi Yishol Rabbi Yossi Aglili, who was also the Rebbe Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Next, Reb Shimon ben Elazar. Reb Shimon, the son of Elazar. Reb Yochanan ben Nuri. And Reb Yochanan ben Nuri, these are the Chavedim of Rabbi Akiva, who were all disciples of Rabbi Yazar Agad. Says the Rambam, Rabbi Gamliel Hazokit. There was a man named Rabbi Gamliel the Elder. Kibel mid Reb Shimon of Ibn Yishol Hazokit. He received Tarih Rabbi from Shimon, his father, the son of Hillel Hazokit. Remember, we learned that Hillel Hazokit Gave Teresh of Alpeh to Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai. He also gave Teresh of Alpeh to his son, Rabbi Shimon. So the Rambam says, Rabbi Shimon had a son, Rabbi Gamliel Azokin, the elder Rabbi Gamliel. He was a grandson of Hillel. He received Teresh of Alpeh from his father, Rabbi Shimon, who received it from his Zayda, from his father, Hillel. So Rabbi Gamliel Azokin is parallel to... You have Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai students who received from Rabbi Yochanan ben Zakkai received it from Hillel. And you have Rabbi Shimon who received it from Rabbi Hillel and he gave it over to his son, Rabbi Gamliel Hazakim. Now this chain continues. Rabbi Shimon benoi kibel memenu. Rabbi Gamliel had a son who he named Shimon, I guess after his father. He received it from his father. From Rabbi Gamliel who received it from his father. Rabbi Shimon who received it from his father, the Hillel, the original Hillel. Rabbi Gamliel benoi kibel memenu. Rem Gamliel, the son of Reb Shimon, the son of Rem Gamliel Azakin, received it from his father. Reb Shimon Benoi, his son Reb Shimon, Kibel Mimenu. Reb Yehuda Benoi Shur Reb Shimon. Now you have Reb Yehuda, the son of Shimon, Zehu Nikra Rabbeinu HaKadosh. This is the man we call Rabbeinu HaKadosh, our holy teacher, who Kibel Me Aviv, Omer Reb Lezer Ben Shamua, Emir Reb Shimon Chavero. And he, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, received Teresh Lapeh from his father, Reb Shimon, and from Reb Lezer Ben Shamua, who we mentioned before, Rabbi Lezer Shavu was one of the colleagues of Reb Meir, who received from Rabbi Akiva, and also from Reb Shimon, who we mentioned earlier as well. <laughs> Reb Shimon, as one of the colleagues of Reb Meir, who also received Torah from Rabbi Akiva, we know Reb Shimon Ben Yechai, of course, was a Talmud of Rabbi Akiva. So let's go through this chain. We have Hillel. Hillel has a son, Reb Shimon, who he gave Torah Shabbat. Reb Shimon has a son, Reb Gamliel. Reb Gamliel Hazake. Reb Gamliel has a son, Reb Shimon. He gives it over to him. He has a son, Reb Gamliel. This is the second Reb Gamliel. The second Reb Gamliel. <coughs> He's known as Reb Gamliel the Yavna. This is not Reb Gamliel who's a grandson of Hillel, but this is the next generation because you have Hillel, you have Shimon, you have Reb Gamliel Hazokin, you have another Reb Shimon, you have a Reb Gamliel, and then you have the Reb Shimon who's a son of 
the second Rebbe Gamliel, and he has a son, Yehuda, and we all know him, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, our holy Rebbe, he has a special name, we'll soon see why. He is, therefore, from that dynasty of Hillel, who received the Torah from his father, but not only from his father, from Rebbe Lazar ben Shamua, from Rebbe Shimon, who all received from Rebbe Meir, Rebbe Yishmael, Rebbe Akiva, Rebbe Lazar Haggadah, Rebbe Yechidah ben Zakkai. So there is a Messiah that spreads around, a lot of cross pollen pollination here. One more piece. One more piece here. Says the Rambam. Rabbeinu HaKadosh Chibar HaMishnah. Rabbeinu HaKadosh Rabbi Yudah Nasi composed the Mishnayis. Umi Mois Moish Rabbeinu HaRabbeinu HaKadosh Lo Yichibru Chibar Shemalam Ninoi Semirab Metere Shabal Peh. From the days of Moish Rabbeinu until Rabbeinu HaKadosh Rabbi Yudah Nasi. They did not make a work that they taught publicly at Torah Shabbal Peh. There was no compilation, no written work of Torah Shabbal Peh. Ella, How do they remember? In every generation, the head of the Bezdin, the head of the court, or the prophet of that generation, writes for himself notes to remember all the teachings that he heard from his teachings, and he teaches it verbally to the community, to the public. But there's no officially documented work with all of this. This is something that he remembers, he retains, and he has notes for himself. Every Navi and Nasi in his generation, every head of Bezdin, that's his responsibility. And every person, every student, if I'm sitting at the shir, I can have my little uh, papyrus, uh, papyrus notebook and take notes. Everybody writes for himself according to his capacity, the explanation of Torah, the laws of Torah, the way he heard it from his Rebbe. They write down something else. Ideas that were innovated in every generation with halacha, halachas that were not heard from Moshe Rabbeinu. Rather, they were deduced from the 13 formulas that Moshe gave the Jewish people how to interpret Torah because there's so many new situations that come up. So Moshe Rabbeinu gave the Jews shloish esri midas, which means the methods of how to interpret Torah, how to take out from the text of Torah all different applications to new situations. Those are called the shloish esri midas. And it has to go to a vote by the court. It has to go to all by the 71 people, and if they agree, if the majority agree, this becomes the halacha, so the students would write that too. They would both write the traditions that were received and the new ideas that were developed throughout the generations. This consisted for hundreds of years till our holy Rebbe, Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who's living, of course, after the destruction of the second base Hamikdash, a few generations after. Rabbeinu HaKadosh compiles all the Shmuas, all the traditions that were given, all the laws, all the explanations, all the commentary that was heard from Moshe Rabbeinu, and that Bezdin of every generation taught in the whole Torah, and he composes from everything. The monumental work that we call Mishnah, Mishnayas. Of course, he divides it into six sections, Royim, Moyed, Nash, Muzik, and Kachim, and Taris. And what is this book? This book is basically attempting to make a brief and concise compilation of all the explanations and all the mitzvahs that were heard from Moshe Rabbeinu throughout all the generations of Torah Shabbat Paz. He says, all the halachas, all the dinim, and all the explanations. V'shinin Chachamim Barabim. He taught it to the sages publicly. It became exposed and revealed. The manuscript was shared to everybody. Everybody copied it. There's no printing press. Manuscript. Everybody has to write it. And he spread it. He disseminated it everywhere. So that the Torah Shabbat should not be forgotten. Now you'll ask a question. Why did he do it? Why did he not leave it the way it always was? Why did he have to do this? Why did Rabbeinu HaKadosh have to do this? Why didn't he just leave it as is? The answer is, He saw that the students are becoming diminished. Wow, the Rambam's vocabulary. Rabbeinu HaKadosh saw that the students are diminishing in every generation. The tsaris, the oppressions 
are becoming stronger and new ones constantly. And the Roman Empire is expanding, conquering the world and becoming stronger. And the Jewish people are being exiled and dispersed to the corners of the planet. And he realized we don't have the cohesiveness, the peace of mind, the infrastructure to be able to maintain the integrity of Judaism the way it was when the Jewish people were cohesive and they could maintain their lifestyle, their tradition in a vibrant and integrated and unified way. He realized it will all be lost. So what did he do? He makes one work, a written work, Mishnayis, for everybody. So everybody could learn it and swiftly, it's not so hard to learn and not forget it. All his days he sat with his court, his own Bezdin, and they taught the mission to everybody. Who are the great sages in the Bezdin of Rabbeinu HaKadosh who received Tayyar Shabbat from him? And I remember, he received it from his father, Reb Shimon, received it from his father, Reb Gamliel, from his father, Reb Shimon, from his father, Reb Gamliel, his father, Reb Shimon, his father, Reb Shimon, from Hillel. Who are these people? Shimon and Gamliel Bonov. He had two sons, Shimon and Gamliel. Named, of course, after his ancestry. Vereb Ephes, Vereb Chanin ben Chama, Vereb Chia, Vera, Vereb Yana, Bar Kaparu, Shmo, Vereb Yechin, Vereb Hoshia, Eloim, Dela, Chom, Shekilu, Menev, Imam, Alofim, Urevavis, Mishara, Chachamim. These are the great sages who received from Rabbi Yehuda Anasi together with thousands and myriads, tens of thousands of the other sages. How many people did he mention here? Shimon, Gamliel, Reb Ephes, Reb Chanina ben Chama, Reb Chia, Rav, the famous Rav, Reb Yanai, Bar Kapara, Shmuel, Reb Yoichanon, and Reb Hoshia. Eleven people. And here begins the transition from Tanoim to Amar Yiroyim. You see, we already had the transition from Beis HaMikdash to post Beis HaMikdash. That was Reb Yoichanon ben Zakkai. And the next generation, Reb Leza HaGadol, this is all post Beis HaMikdash. Now is a new transition from Tanoim to Amar Yiroyim. Rav, Shmuel, Rabbi Yochanan, these are all people who sat with Rabbeinu HaKadosh, and they begin the new generation from Tanoim Tamirayim. Here you see it happening. Even though these 11 all received from Rabbeinu HaKadosh and stood in his base medrash, Rabbi Yochanan Katan Hoya. Rabbi Yochanan was still small. Afterwards, he becomes a student of Rabbi Yanai, who's one of the disciples of Rabbeinu, and he receives Torah from him. The Chain Rav Kibalmi Rabbi Yanai. Rav, who was one of the students of Rabbeinu Hakadosh, also received Torah from Rabbi Yanai, who was a student of Rabbeinu Hakadosh. So they heard from Rabbeinu, but then they learned a lot from Rabbi Yanai, who was the next generation. Ushmuel Kibalmi Rabbi Chanina Bar Shmuel received from Rabbi Chanina Bar Rav, who is Rav? Rav Chibe, Rav composes Sifra, Sifri, Levayir Uloidia Ikriha Mishnah. He composes two seminal works. One is called Sifri, which is a medrash halacha on Sefer Vayikra. It's also known as Toiras Koyanim, composed by Rav. He also composes Sifri. Sifri is a medrash halacha on Bamidbar and Dvarim. Sifra and Sifri, Vayikra Midbar Dvarim, an oral, oral tradition commentary on Vayikra Midbar Dvarim, was written by who? By Rav who was a student of Rabbi Yana and a student of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, and considered the first generation of Amirayim and one of the great sages of his time. Reb Chia, who was also a student of Rav, Chiber HaToysef, the Levayin Yoni HaMishnah. He composes a work known as Toysef. The Toysef means Toysvis. It's additional to the Mishnah, to explain the Mishnah, because the Mishnah is so concise. Reb Chia composes Toysef. The next, who are both students of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, the composer of Mishnah, they compose works known as Brises. Brises means things from the outside. It never made it into the text of the Mishnah. So the Toisefta was written by Reb Chia and the Brises by Reb Hoshia and Bar Kapora. The Maharik writes, what's the difference between Toisefta and Brises? So he says, Toisefta was written by Reb Chia in the presence and with the knowledge of Rabbeinu HaKadosh and in his base medrash. The Brises are Bar Yesa. They came from outside. They were written by the Bersha and Bar Kapara, not under the auspices of Rabbeinu HaKadosh, it was outside of his base medrash. That's the difference of Taisefta. Taisefta means in addition to the Mishnah, and Brises is outside of the Mishnah. Rabbi Yochanan, who's also a student of Rabbeinu HaKadosh and Rabbi Yanai, because remember, he was young, he was a minor, he was a cotton by Rav, 
by Rabbeinu Hakadosh, Chibur Talmud Yerushalmi by Yisrael Achukur Ben Abayis Bekiruv Shleish Meis Shana. He composed the Jerusalem Talmud, Talmud Yerushalmi in Eretz Yisrael, around three hundred years after the destruction of the Second Beis Hamikdash. This is Rabbi Yechinon. When was the Second Beis Hamikdash destroyed? Around the year seventy after the Common Era, seventy, or in the Hebrew calendar it would be three thousand eight hundred and thirty since creation, thirty-eight thirty. Some say 68, 69, but let's say 70. 300 years later, that means the Talmud Yerushalmi was written approximately in the year 370. The Ramam says approximately, so it could be a little later, around 400, 390, 380, 400, 410, but that's the time when Rabbi Yechanan composes the Talmud Yerushalmi around 300 years after the destruction of the second base of So we now went already a few hundred years after Churban Bayesheni, which happened at the time of Rabbi Yechanan ben Zak, and we went down to Rabbi Lezer Agadol, and we went down to Rabbi Akiva, right? And we went down all the way here to Rabbi Noah Kaddish's student, Rabbi Yechanan, who lives much later, and he composes Talmud Yerushalmi. Some of the great sages who received from Rav and Shmuel, both students of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, who wrote the Mishnah. And Rav and Shmuel were also students of Rabbi Yanei and Rabbi Hanina. Here are his students. We come now to the next generation of Amir Rayim. Now you know these names. Anybody who learned Gemara knows these names. But here we see how it works, how the chain works. You have Rabbi Huna. Rabbi Huna received from Rav and Shmuel. Next, Rav Yehuda. Next, Rav Nachman and Rav Kahana. What about those who heard from Rabbi Yochanan, the great sages who received Torah from Rabbi Yochanan? Rabbi Yochanan remains in Eretz Yisrael and he makes Talmud Yerushalmi. He has Rabbi Bar Barchana. Rabbi the son of Barchana. Rabbi Ami, Rabbi Asi, Rabbi Dimi, Rabbi Ovin. Now let's go to the next generation. Rav Hunna and Rabbi Yehuda received from Rav and Shmuel. Who are the great sages who received Teresh of Alpeh? Who are the sages who received Teresh of Alpeh from Rav Hunna and Rabbi Yehuda? He says Mikla, which means some of them. He's not doing all of them, some of them. Rabbi, the famous Rabbi, and Rabbi Yosef. So you see now here you have the third generation of Amirayim, because you had Rav and Shmuel with the first generation. Rabbi Huna, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Nachman, Rabbi Kahan, according to the Rambam, received from Rav and Shmuel, they're the second generation of Amirayim. Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef is the next generation who received from Rabbi Huna and Rabbi Yehuda, who received from Rav and Shmuel. Rabbi Yehuda was the famous student of Shmuel as Rabbi Huna as well. We go now to the next generation. Who are some of the sages who received Torah Shabbal Peh from Rabbah and Rabbi Yosef? Now, of course, the Mishnah is written already, but still you need a teacher to teach, explain, enlighten, elucidate, and new situations are coming up. Abaya and Rava. The famous Abaya and Rava who are quoted throughout the whole Talmud Bavli continuously. Abaya is the Abaya and Rava. They are the students of Rabbah and Rabbi Yosef. Abaya was also raised by Rabbah, who was his uncle because he was an orphan, but Rabbah was also a student of Rabbah. Rabbah and Rabbi Yosef, of course, were students of Rabbi Huna and Rabbi Yehuda, who were students of Rav and Shmuel, who were students directly of Rabbi Yehuda Hanasi, the author of the Mishnah. Ushneim Kivlugam made of Nachman. Abaya and Rabbah were also students of Rabbi Nachman, who was already a colleague of Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Yehuda of Hunner Bunen and received directly from Rav and Shmuel. So they also heard directly from Renach, but not only Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef, who are generation, who are the next generation, but they also got from Rabbi Nachman, who is straight from Rav and Shmuel, who come to Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Some of the sages who received Teresh HaBal Peh from Rav, Rabbi Ashi and Ravina. Or Mar Ber Rabashi, Kibbal Me Aviv Rabashi Me Ravina. Mar, the son of Rabashi, received from his father, Rabashi and Ravina, who received from Rava, who received from Rab Nachman and from Rabbi and Rabbi Yosef, who go back to Rab Huna and Rabbi Yehuda, who go back to Rav and Shmuel, who go back to Rabbeinu HaKadosh Rabbi Yehuda Anasi, who goes back to his father, Rab Shimon, and Rab Loza Ben Shamua, and Rab Shimon Ba Yechai, it cetera, all the way back. Now, the Rambam makes a summation of everything he just said. And this is the last paragraph we're going to be learning today. We'll be mamish another few minutes. The Ramah now makes a whole summation because he wants you to know the names. And you'll understand soon why it's so important to know the names. Nimtza, what's the summation? May Reb Ashi ad Moshe Rabbeinu Olav HaShalom Arbayim Deiris. From Reb Ashi, back up to Moshe, how, how, how many people did we go through? 40? 40? It sounds fantastical, right? Because when is Rab Ashi living? Rab Ashi is the composer of Talmud Bavli. Rab Yochanan is Talmud Yerushalmi. 
That's before Talmud Bavli. Rajan Bozo Talmud Bavli. This is hundreds of years after the destruction of the second base Hamikdash. So from Moshe Rabbeinu, Moshe Rabbeinu, the destruction of the first base Hamikdash was around 900 years. And then you have another base Hamikdash and its destruction. So you have, you're dealing with more than 1,500 years. So the Rambam says it's 40 people, 40 generations from Reb Ashi back to Moshe. And he goes, Ve'eluhein, and I'm going to read it swiftly. You already know all these names because we went downwards and now we go upwards. We climbed the ladder down from Moshe to Reb Ashi and now we're climbing back up in the reverse order. The Rambam goes both ways. And I want to leave you with this thought why the Rambam feels the need to do it both ways. It's fascinating. Ve'eluhein, here we go. Okay. I'm going to read this fast. We're now going to go through 40 generations. Aleph. Reb Ashi mi Rav. Reb Ashi received her from Rav. Rav mi Rav. Rav mi Rav Huna. Right? Rav, his Rav is Reb Huna. Reb Huna mi Reb Yochanan v'Rav Ushmua. This is number four. Reb Huna. So we had number one is Reb Ashi. Number two is Rav. Number three is Rav. Number four is Reb Huna who received from Rechem Rav Ushmua. Next. Five. Rabbi Yechon of Rabbi Shmuel, mi Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Six, Rabbeinu HaKadosh, mi Rabbi Shimon of Rabbi Shimon his father. Seven, Rabbi Shimon, mi Rabbi Gamliel of from his father Rabbi Gamliel. Eight, Rabbi Gamliel, mi Rabbi Shimon of from his father Rabbi Shimon. Nine, Rabbi Shimon, mi Rabbi Gamliel HaZaken of from his the father, the elder Rabbi Gamliel. Ten, Rabbi Gamliel HaZaken, mi Rabbi Shimon of Rabbi Gamliel the elder from his father Rabbi Shimon. Rabbi Gamliel Shimon, mi Hillel of it v'shama. Mi Hillel of it v'shama. And Rabbi Shimon received the title from... His father Hillel and Hillel's colleague, which is Shammai. Now the Ramadan didn't say before Shammai, but he said that Reb Shimon received from Hillel and his Bezdin, and part of the Bezdin was Shammai. So that's why he says here Shammai. So Reb Shimon received from Hillel his father and from Shammai. Number twelve, Hillel the Shammai, Shmai of Avtalian, Shmai of Avtalian, Yehuda, and Shimon. Yehuda the Shimon, Yeshua and Prachi and Nitai Har Bailey. Shua Venitai, Yosef Ben Yosef, Yosef Ben Yochanan, Yosef Ben Yosef, Yosef Ben Yochanan, May Antigonus, seventeen Antigonus, Shimon Atzadik, Shimon Atzadik, May Ezra, Ezra Mi Baruch, Baruch Mi Yirmiyah, Mi Yirmiyah Mitzvani, Mitzvani Michalakim, Michalakim Mi Nachum, Nachum Mi Yol, Mi Yol Mi Michal, Michal Mi Yishaya, Mi Yishaya Mi Amis, Mi Amis Mi Hayshaya, Mi Hayshaya Mi Scharia, Number Thirty, Scharia Mi Hayada, Number Thirty One, Hayya Hayada Received May Elisha, Number Thirty Two, Elisha May Eli Yahu. 33, Eliyahu me Achia, Achia Shiloini, Achia me David, David me Shmuel. Number 36, Shmuel from Eli. Number 37, Eli from Pinchas. Number 38, Pinchas from Yehoshua. Number 39, Yehoshua me Moshe Rabbeinu. Number 40, Moshe Rabbeinu me Pi HaGvura. Moshe Rabbeinu, who did he receive from? Pi HaGvura from the Rebbe Nishalayim, from Hashem. Nimtzu shakula me Hashem aleka Yisrael. What does this mean? This means that all of them receive from Hashem, the God of Israel, the God of Israel. If the Mishnah title was a comprehensive compendium of halacha, why was Rabbi Yosef's Karo Shulchan Aruch written later? The reason it was written later is for a few reasons. First of all, the Rabbi Yosef Karo lived in the 1500s. The Rambam lived in the 1100s. So you're dealing with a few hundred years later. A lot of new situations, a lot of new circumstances, a lot of new questions, a lot of new dilemmas that have to be addressed. That's number one. Number two, the Rambam was, the Rambam took, the Rambam very seldom brings debates in his Sefer. He saw all of the arguments, all of the debates, and he established the halacha the way he understood that this is the right halacha. A lot of people, some people took issue with it. There are different perspectives, there's different arguments. Why is the Rambam choosing, right? That's why the Tur, which is the next great ma- major compilation of halacha that was written in the 1400s by Rabbeinu Yaakov Baal HaTurim, who was the son of the Rosh, Rabbeinu Asher, the Tur, he wrote a halachic chibur, a halachic composition, and he said that he used three authorities. He used his father, Rabbeinu Asher. He used the Rambam. And he used the Rif, Rabbeinu Yitzchak Alfasi, who also wrote a halachic uh, compilation. 
before the Rambam. This is Rabbi Yitzchak Afez, Rabbi Yitzchak Alfasi from Morocco, where the Rambam also lived. Rabbi Yitzchak Afez, who lived before the Rambam. He lived in the 10 hundreds, in the 11th century. And at the end of every Gemara, you'll see the riff. He took out from that tractate all the halachas. So he said, I took those three, the riff, the Rambam, and my father, and I saw. If they all agree, great. And if they argue, so I followed the majority. So there were different traditions, not always according to the Rambam. The Shulchan Aruch, Rabbeinu Yosef Karo, was a Svardi himself, and he follows very often the, the path of the Rambam, but it comes after the Torah. So that's why there's a new diversity that comes in into the subsequent compilations of Halacha. And he wrote the Shulchan Aruch also in a language, he wanted it to be Shulchan Aruch, which means a ready table. A ready table, a prepared table means he wanted that the Jews of his time and subsequent times should be able to come and, you know, take it right off the table. Uh, the Rambam includes all of the halachas, even the times of the Beis HaMikdash and the times of Mashiach, etc. So the Shulchan Aruch was written more like a handbook, you know, a ready handbook for the Jews of the time, because they were to be able to see, to see uh, what to do. But it's a very different genre. The Shulchan Aruch and the Rambam is a very different genre. The Shulchan Aruch is more like, here is, here is what to do. I'm writing it for today. The Rambam did this compilation of the whole Kala Kula. Wasn't the Torah the first one to extract halacha from the Gemara and organize them by topic? No. The Torah is much later than the Rambam. Everybody have a beautiful day. Have a wonderful Shabbos. Mazel tov, shechiyonu v'kimonu, 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 v'